Hello, welcome to another episode of Slap Talk. I think for a lot of seasoned collector, a long time collector, they probably will know everything that I'm about to talk uh, as far as slab and pedigree. Okay, the topic of this will be pedigree. And um, but I think there's a lot of younger and newer collectors, you know, um, that may not understand about pedigree. First, I put a link below. Okay, there's a great um, website below. Um, it's run by CC. I I think Matt Nelson of CCS is the person that's uh, handling that website, and he is writing a book. <laughs> it has been in the process of being done for years now, if not over a decade. But it's, there will be a big book with hundreds of image, high resolution scans, pictures of pedigree book and description and stories and articles about various pedigrees. But on that website, you will see on the left side, the list of many pedigrees and then write-ups, a little blurb stories about um, the pedigree. Good site to serve for those that have never been there or never heard about pedigree or understand or don't know much about pedigree. But at the end of the day, if you know about pedigree, this video is not going to shed anything new. Um, as much as many of us think our collection can be considered a pedigree, most aren't, okay? Most aren't because I, th I think there's a lot of misconception uh, with what is considered a pedigree. First and foremost, it has to be something that that collector bought off the rack over the years. It can't be something that I, for example, if any one of us hit the lottery, okay, and go out there and buy high grade silver age keys and golden age keys, that's not a pedigree. It's a collection. It can be like a Nicholas Cage collection, okay? He went out there using his wealth to buy a bunch of big golden age keys for the most part, and then you see the, la the the note on the label from the Nicholas Cage collection. So that that is not a pedigree. To be a pedigree, you have to, of course, buy the books off the rack over the many years. But at the same time, it does not have to be a huge collection. You know, there's a lot of big collection that have thousands of books bought off the rack by the original collector but because it's missing key books that's the thing keys it has to have keys okay it can't be 10,000 books of bronze it doesn't get there but if you have a bunch of keys uh, silver age golden age then that make into a that play a bigger part the, the size of the collection play a smaller part than the quality of the collection okay so you can have um, a golden age collection I you know I uh, on top of my head okay I don't I did not surf the website and study up on all the pedigree for this video but I think some of the golden age collection like the Billy Wright or the Crippens uh, don't have 5,000 books I think the Billy Wright collection, the Billy Wright pedigree might have something like three to four hundred books, but there's a lot of golden age keys in there. So that's you know how it got the pedigree uh, designation from CGC or CBCS. Um, for those that buy a lot of books from quality quality comics, you, you're probably familiar with the Tangi Farm collection. Okay, the Tonky Farm collection is huge. It's supposed to have like 7,000 books is in this little nifty postcard that they include in um, the books. When you buy a Tonky Farm books, it has 7,000 books. Mostly, I think there's some Silver Age that are mostly bronze from what, you know, 
I don't study up on the, the, the books, but it's not flooded with silver age keys. It does it it is missing a lot of big silver age keys and I think that's probably play a big part in why it did not or has not got a pedigree designation. Just my guess. You can't have a collection of original owner, okay? Because this is an original owner collection of 7,000 books, many high grade. Sadly, many were stored in poor condition. So the page quality of this collection is in line with say the Savannah pedigree with a lot of cream page because the Savannah pedigree were stored in the attic in a hot and humid environment of Georgia. So that's how, you know, pedigree uh, were considered. Um, if you buy a pedigree book from Heritage, okay, Heritage go a bit above other auction house when they create a pedigree. They even created like a nifty little, this is nice stock of paper. It's, it's fancy. It's not like a, a cheap, glossy piece. It's a, I don't know how to describe it, but it, it's it's really nice with the, you know, shiny metallic leather. It's embossed. Uh, but, you know, whenever you get a book, whether it's a, a raw book or a slab from um, this collection, from this pedigree, you get these things as well as the savannah pedigree see here's a an example of uh, some fun savannah card that i have from buying some raw books over the years um i bought them when they first came out a couple years ago i have not buy anything and here's a an example of a pedigree slab that i bought uh, way back when this collection this pedigree went on auction 9.8 okay stunning stunning beauty but i had uh, i think i have like five or six slab from this pedigree i have sold most of my other pedigree i had pedigree from the massachusetts the mass pedigree i had pedigree from savannah i had um boston pedigree uh, a book from boston pedigree a few other ones the one that I really wanted to have, of course, is the church, the Edward Church pedigree. But those are not cheap, and um, so I <laughs> have never owned a, a my high or a church pedigree. Um, but hopefully, this video clarify what can and cannot be considered a pedigree. My collection will never be considered a pedigree um, regardless of what I have in it because I bought them second hand most of everything I bought especially the all the keys were never bought off the rack by me okay so that's it thanks for watching